Hey there, welcome to episode 15 of the Golf Never Sleeps podcast. My name is Ryan Robillard. I'm a PGA of Canada golf coach. And on this podcast, I like to have conversations and provide some thoughts around some strategies to help you play and practice more effectively with the ultimate goal of shooting lower scores. Today's episode is the second part of my interview with Dr. Andrew Mercer. If you didn't watch the first episode, I encourage you to please go back and watch last week's episode, which was part one. Uh, if you didn't watch it, so Dr. Mercer is a registered chiropractor, but goes far beyond what a lot of people think when they hear chiropractor. We talk a lot about some of his history. Uh, Dr. Andrew spends a lot of time working with other players and professional athletes in other sports. And we talk a little bit about the comparison around the average golfer and the intensity of the golf swing and how we should look at that and sometimes how it's comparable to what we see in other sports because his goal is to make sure that people can be as healthy as they possibly can to play the best golf that they possibly can. Dr. Andrews helped me with my body. He's been a fantastic resource and I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I think if you watch both of them, you will take a lot away, uh, maybe to help deepen your understanding around your body swing connection and maybe some things that you need to do a little bit better to help your body move more effectively. Maybe just some things for you to ponder as we go into this upcoming off season. So I hope you enjoy part two. If you didn't watch part one, uh, make sure you go back and watch that. But this is the second and final part of my interview with Dr. Andrew Mercer. But if they don't know how to rotate their hips or if they've never disassociated their upper from their lower body, yeah. I'm watching that person going like, I'm about to watch a car accident here because they're going to hurt themselves. And I That kind of brings me a little bit into collaboration. I think we can spend a ton of time talking about collaboration, but when we're talking about players shooting the best scores that they can, and I've had, I think, two other podcasts kind of on this topic, I'm not the answer for everything. I'm an expert in some areas, but I'm not an expert in a lot of areas, and that's why it's been very fortunate that GPAR just happens to be set up shop at my home club, which is 18 kilometers from home, which is great. <laughs> But now when I have a player that's coming to me and there's a couple that we won't name, but I think you'll probably know who I'm talking about here that come top of mind where they came to me and the biggest thing they needed was not a golf lesson. Yeah. They needed to move better. Mm -hmm. They needed to learn how to stabilize their body. They had to get rid of that injury that had been nagging them forever. What are your thoughts on collaboration specific to helping players shoot lower scores and maybe I can give my perspective but in an ideal world in the role that you're in what's the relationship between a golfer a golf coach and you what does that look like to you I want it to look like we are best buddies like I want to make sure almost feel like we have a little group chat we can go in and we can kind of chat about anything that we want to improve any like um when anyone comes to see us, if we can have multiple sets of eyes, that's fantastic. Because I might assess somebody. I might go ahead in that point, and then it's my responsibility, in my opinion, to then communicate what I've found on one particular day to that player and also to that person's full medical fitness uh, and coaching team, right? So as you know, I try to CC everybody as they kind of go through. Um, and then just to let everybody know what the plan is. Because at that point, once everybody's under the same... Um, I would say un under the same umbrella and everybody knows what the what the whole structure will look like week by week, month by month and everything. Then we can kind of see what the goals are going to get to. We might end up accomplishing some of these goals way ahead of time. Well, that might be yeah. something as simple as let's say it's a simple mobility fix. And then they end up getting that five miles an hour extra they want in their swing. They've already they might have accomplished that goal by midsummer. Right? right. And we might not even or they might have accomplished that goal halfway through the off season. Right, and they might come in. They might see you, and then you're you're looking at me like I'm a genius. When really, at <laughs> yeah. that point, all it was was that person putting the time and effort in, and listening and taking in what I've said, what you've said, what anyone else says that's working with them has kind of said. So I want to make sure that there's no stone left unturned. Every T is crossed and every I is dotted, because in all honesty, we need to make sure if that person is serious then and wants to get better whether that be just at golf or whatever they want to do i need to make sure that they are 
when they go to you, they know, hey, you know what? I went and I did a really heavy leg day with Andrew, or I went and I went in and did like a heavy speed day. You might at that point, you might go ahead and do this instead of that, maybe a short game lesson. You might not go driver lesson that day, right. right? If you don't know that and they don't tell you that, or I don't tell you that, you might go in and that might be a recipe for disaster and, and overloading yeah. their their joints and muscles, right? So then they might come to me or you the next week and they might have to skip a workout. They might have to skip a treatment. They might have to skip a lesson, Yeah. right? If we're not all on the same page, that's going to be tough. Or also just be able to have the recognition of being like, if you see somebody moving a different way than what they're used to or what you're used to, whether that be good or bad, you might at that point then change technique on that day or just open up the eyes to something. Like if you're seeing somebody that's not able to rotate through and maybe it's having a slide or a sway one way or another, you might say, okay, you know what? Let's just do a little bit of external rotation onto, you know, your lead leg, right? Or something like that at setup, right? And that might be something that if I go ahead and I have somebody that has a really crummy mobility problem, and it's a true mobility problem. It might be something that's structural. I might not be able to fully fix that, right? Yeah. And that like, might just be how they're born. It might be the fact that they had a hip replacement, right. to be quite honest, right? Yep. And they literally cannot get because of joint limitations through that. So if I can go ahead, have that proper assessment, relay that information over to you, that makes it so you won't put them in a position to get hurt and I won't be able to put them in a position to get hurt for myself. And then at that point, that's that person's best interest to win, 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 win every single time. Um, so there was a player that I started working with or that I've worked with for a while, but I connected them with you going into an off season mm -hmm. and they went to you for the assessment. You had copied all involved parties, including myself about what you guys had covered and different things like that. Yeah. And after your first session, I saw him, I think I had seen him two weeks after your first session and, and he was moving beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I kind of joked because everyone knew what was going on. I said, Oh, I said that Andrew plan, I'm like that's working. <laughs> hey, and, and, and he goes, I feel so good today. Right? Like energy levels high. I feel yeah. good. And it was great to be able to make that connection. I see him our next lesson two weeks later, like the tin man walks in the door. <laughs> And he, and this, and this person, like you can hear like the squeak, like he yeah, needed yeah. WD 40 to get going. And again, since everyone was on the same page, I said, I said, I gotta be honest with you. I said, what the heck's going on? Yeah. Ah, uh, busy week at work. I got stuff going on at home. The kids, this, the kids, that I said, when's the last time you were, you did any of the Andrew plan? Hmm. And he goes, the last time I saw you. Yeah. And it was a fantastic intervention because I was able to pull that and say, how do you feel today? He's like, I'm a one out of 10. Yeah. And I said, how'd you feel? And last time was a 10 out of 10. And I was able to kind of pull that back and say, I can help you with your golf swing, but not if you're going to keep moving this way or else we can make some changes. They're just not going to be that effective. Mm -hmm. I don't think if the three of us were connected that those dots would have ever been connected. Exactly. Because maybe I don't ask the question, man, why the heck is he moving so differently from week to week? He might not be as open mm -hmm. that I'm seeing a personal trainer. Because I think sometimes people are afraid to say that they're being split mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. different areas. Mm -hmm. And now, oftentimes when I see players that are not moving at their best, my first question is, when's the last time you've seen Andrew? When's the last time you've done what Andrew has prescribed you. Mm -hmm. And as much as I don't like doing that because it maybe feels like I'm coming down on them, I'm always able to pull in the thread. When you're doing your Andrew stuff, remember how good our lessons are? Like there's somewhat of a connection there. It's not magic. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's required. Mm -hmm. I have another player that I work with that we were talking about her golf swing and we were talking about how hard she was holding the golf club. She said, I feel so much tension. I feel tension in my arms, tension in my shoulders. It feels like I'm getting an ab workout every single time uh, I have a golf lesson. And this, I think, was my third lesson with this player. And I was like, I don't know very many players that are telling me they're going to an ab workout when they're playing golf. And this person has a trainer. I said, I need you to tell your trainer what you just told me the next time you see them. Yeah. I get a message two days later in Coach Now. And... Ryan, I told my trainer and 
he's telling me I'm actually not really activating this and this and this, and that's causing the tension, the, the, the tightness. And then she goes, I'm going to send you some videos of what you recorded. Yeah. She sends me a video recording of her trainer holding the, the camera, and she's doing some moves that they're working on, and he's explaining it to her. Yeah. And our lessons now and since have drastically improved. Good. Because when someone has come to me, I'm obviously thinking golf swing, but I'm thinking body and usually body more importantly. Yeah, yeah. And now I have a team of experts I can send them to be like, I need you to get this body moving better. Yeah. Because they want to improve and I want them to improve, but their golf swing is always going to suffer the way that they're moving. Oh, yeah. If you get their body moving better, I believe I can help them uh, make a, a more repeatable move mm -hmm. that's maybe more efficient, that's helping them hit the golf ball farther. Mm -hmm. The potential just goes up drastically yeah. at that point when they can move a little bit better. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast episode. If you are, I have a favor to ask. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and make sure you hit that bell to make sure you get notified on when a new episode drops. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts, please make sure you subscribe there as well. But if you could leave me a rating... Wherever you're listening or watching, if you do those things for me, it really helps the podcast grow and also motivates me to put out more content. And as always, on any platform, if you ever have any questions, please reach out. Let me know. I answered every comment. Now let's get you back to your episode. Um, a little bit of a pivot, but I th mm -hmm. maybe not, depending what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. And maybe we've already touched on it. What's the biggest misunderstanding that golfers have? about anything fitness related what do you believe is the biggest misunderstanding that they can be john daly and perform <laughs> oh man oh that's the best answer ever don't, don't get me wrong that's the best answer john I, daly is an absolute freak of nature he yeah. can move specific to the golf game and he had a lot of things in life so great and he is just like every I know college guys dream to be able to just go out and hammer a bunch of pops and yeah. cigars and be able to perform at an extremely high level. You don't prescribe uh, Diet Coke, M and M's, and a pack of darts. That's not the, that's not the <laughs> recipe for performance. I've had a lot of people actually ask me this, this same question. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> like an odd amount. Um, to be quite honest, I just want people to be like Goldilocks. I want you to experiment with what's going to work because what works for you isn't going to work for everybody, right? And that right. goes for every type of treatment or um, lesson that I might do or you might do, right? That mm -hmm. they, nothing's always going to work for everybody. So there's no cookie cutter approach. Right. People think that there's a cookie cutter approach. That's probably the biggest misconception. They think that if they work on their putting and chipping and if they work on their um, overall general fitness that it's going to come immediately and pay big dividends immediately that right. never happens and that's always going to fluctuate the best i have ever felt in my entire life from a physical standpoint was the worst i felt from a mental standpoint right. that was when i was doing my bodybuilding and that sucked um but then also the worst that i felt from a physical standpoint i've performed at a very 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 high level in golf but i've also had it the other way as well right so right Golf just, there's so much that goes into it from a mental and physical level that is hard to describe to anybody, right? Unless you've actually played it and went through the ringer, right? Especially right. if you played at a high level or regardless if you're just a weekend warrior, you know that there's going to be your good and bad days. The thing is that the consistency is what trumps all, right? Like you look at the best golfers in the world, they are so consistent at their routine it has probably taken them years to perfect that routine, but now that they have that routine in place and that can be ever changing based on their goals. And right. if they frequently audit their, um, their plan, which I do highly recommend, like you might accomplish whatever goal very, very early in your season or very late in your season and you can pivot back and forth. Right. But I want people to just be able to make sure that they're, open to the different changes they might experience and then just be stay stay committed you're gonna have probably a couple of really crummy rounds after you've went from 95 miles an hour to 105 miles an hour with your drive you might not have that same control anymore right just because you can swing that high doesn't mean that you're going to shoot lower scores you have the potential 
to put yourself in a better position maybe off the tee maybe but that doesn't mean that the rest of your game is going to be perfect right so when i go ahead and i work with anybody especially if it's something as simple as i want to work on my long game and getting more potential it's like i want to try to make it so i can give you that ferrari engine right it doesn't mean you're gonna be able to drive it around right. like the guys in fast and furious right you know that's where having that collaboration of everybody you know there is going to be really really good yeah so. I, w- I would add to that a little bit so essentially the biggest your answer to the biggest uh, misunderstanding is that players have to they have to do a little bit of experimenting mm-hmm. they have to commit mm-hmm. uh, to what they're doing mm-hmm. I think another thing that people misunderstand is that we're very af- players are very afraid of making changes oh yeah and I think the perception is a player is going to take a golf lesson and they think because they took a lesson they're going to hit it worse yeah but if a player decides to make a change to their body or to come for a golf lesson they're obviously at a spot where they've been trying things and they haven't been working they need to commit, but they need to commit and not be fearful. Yeah. Things, yes, obviously there's a chance things might get worse. Mm-hmm. There's things chance might get better as well. And I think if they don't abandon that fear and say like, screw it, let's do it, that holds them back a lot. Yeah, 100%. People will take one lesson, they're not happy, they want to bail. Mm-hmm. They go to a trainer once, they go to the gym twice, they don't get the change they want to bail. So I think that that's something that that's a huge opportunity. Change takes a lot of time in it every a- facet of life. Every asset. Every facet. So like, like that's, that is probably the most biggest misconception like we're talking like, yeah. just that change will not come fast. It'll take right. a lot of time and it'll take a lot of commitment depending on what your goals are. Right. Let's do this. I'm going to ask, I want you to list three things every golfer needs to do. And, and I'll, this like, these are action items that I want them to take away. Mm-hmm. And I know that we said that there's not no cookie cutter, Mm -hmm. but I think in the body movement space with what you see the most often, what's the number one mobility thing or mobility exercise they have to do? Mm -hmm. What's number one strength and what's the number one speed? So first things first, what's the number, like question one, what's the mobility thing Mm -hmm. every golfer has to do? It's going to change between if you're male or female and if what demographic you are, if you're young or old. Okay. Um, if I had to say one thing for everyone, that'd be extremely hard. So I'm just going to go divide it between male and female. Sure. Right? Let's do that. Um, yep. For males, majority of the time, it ends up being like a hip issue um, or an ankle mobility issue. So at that point, trying to get those to move a heck of a lot better. Um, typically for females, more mobility stuff I personally have seen ends up being more stuff like in the T-spine, right? So they might end up being able to move very, very well through their hips, right? But their T-spine, so the mid-back essentially doesn't always move as well. And it might seem like it moves really, really well, but an isolated um, experience, then a lot of times it won't. It'll end up being like their hips and their lumbar spine and their neck that moves a heck of a lot better. Yeah. And that T-spine should have a lot a lot of movement, but it doesn't. With males, you also see that too, but with fee- if I had to divide it between that. <laughs> um, so I would say for males, work on your hip mobility. For females, make sure you're having that isolated thoracic mobility. Um, that can be anything as simple as, for males, something as simple as like a 90-90 or like a stork turn. Um, could be really, really good. So essentially just getting those hips moving in one way, shape, or form, especially rotation. For females, just having that isolated thoracic mobility, sometimes that can be something as simple as like a thread the needle um, or an open book type yeah. of thing. So that could be something for them. For a stability issue, it ends up being more so for women, it's usually the opposite. Usually their hips are so mobile, they're not stable enough. Right. So I would say try to get more squats in there right don't just do the the hip abductions at the gym and don't just do like the the hip adduction so like the machine that comes in and out right just do that go ahead do squats do deadlifts that's something that a lot of times they avoid because they just there's like the sexy workouts on on tiktok okay right do do your squats do your deads for guys making sure that your same thing squats and deads are usually really 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 good 
Um, and then in terms of speed, just swing hard. Like honestly, yeah. take the last five swings of your practice on the range and just swing as hard as you can. I don't even care if you hit a ball. Right. Just swing as hard as you can. If you want to incorporate a ball, I would say maybe swing five to 10 swings and try your hardest just to hit it as hard as you can, just without any aim on that ball. And then maybe take a couple swings, hit it as hard as you can, trying to hit a fade. If you understand the ball flight laws, which is yep. another big. Yeah, we, we can stop at them just swinging hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> without doing too to, much damage here. Yeah. <laughs> from my vantage point, I would actually like to see, ask you about like, what the biggest misconception is. Because actually, recently for me, ball flight laws have been something that's been a huge misconception that I've just had to explain to people recently. Right. Um, but yeah, swing as hard as you can, try to hit fade. Swing as hard as you can, try to hit a draw. Swing as hard as you can, just try to hit a straight. Very rarely is that actually going to happen, but just being able to experiment what maybe a face feel feels like mm -hmm. when you're swinging that hard is going to be really cool. It's going to be a really fun experiment to kind of see and literally ignore where the heck it goes, but just swing as hard as you can. And in all honesty, you can then do maybe some more plyometrics in the gym. You can do right. some more like explosive rows or explosive pushing exercises with rotation. If you want to just incorporate that in there, that is something I would definitely highly recommend. But in all honesty, once again, I cannot emphasize enough. Don't just guess what is your biggest weakness. Get assessed. Okay. See kind of what's going on. Because even though I say that this is, like I said, you put me in a hard position just giving one of each right. thing. Yeah. Um, that's just kind of what I see generally. And even then that generally, that might be in like 40% of people. But that 40% is more than you know the average yeah. person with everything else divided equally. Um, so that's kind of what I would say. I know that was a really long winded way to say. It's all right. You got them all saying. in there. You got them. But, but, uh, but I appreciate the fact that you recognize like you should split it up male and female, something I would have thought of, but obviously, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's finish off with some rapid fire questions. I love these. Okay. You're the opposite of rapid fire. Yeah. So we need very short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Longest drive you've ever hit. Uh, so I hit this actually at my grandpa's home club. It was 356 yards, par four, and I went right from tee to green wow. and eagled it in Scotland. That was one of my coolest experiences I've ever had. Actually, I think I actually sent you the screenshot yes, of my you Garmin. Did. Uh, yes, so you did. Yes, you did. 356 yards. Yeah. That was my longest that I had recorded on the Garmin. Right. So. Favorite on course drink? Uh, probably a double shot of Jameson. On the golf course? <laughs> yeah. That would probably, if, if, I'm, if I'm having a shit, I don't know if it's a PG podcast. It, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> if, if I'm, uh, if I'm. Well, then you don't even want to know what my next question is. <laughs> if I'm having a terrible round, if I could just turn it around just with that. Some people wait for the hot dog at the turn. I'll just go double shot of Jameson and just kind of go from there. Um, in all honesty, for me, I if I'm having nerves, that would be it. My most consistent drink is way different. It would just be some uh, electrolytes in my gigantic. Uh, yeah, like I was waiting this. for like a liquid IV tip pull here, not to not a Jameson sponsorship. No, coming no, out no. Of the... Jameson, that there's no free ads, so. <laughs> so I'm actually really con so based on the fact that your answer for favorite on course drink was two shots of Jameson. <laughs> What's your favorite off course drink? Is it six shots of Jameson? Like uh, that would actually probably be <laughs> uh, well, Jameson. Jameson's pretty pretty safe play to be honest. Um, when I went to Scotland this past year, when I went to the the Open and everything, I ended up actually having some extra different type of scotch there. Uh, Laphroaig was one that uh, ten year Laphroaig was awesome. I just remember when my wife came in. From the bathroom, this had kind of come in, and she could smell the smokiness from that scotch oh, really? from like the second she left the bathroom to come yeah. to come sit at the back of the table. It was pretty wild. So yeah, probably the frog. Uh, who's the best golfer at G Park Canada? Oh, Derek, by far, is so annoying. It's, is it is it close or is it not close? <laughs> it was close at some points throughout last year and this year, but he's kind of really run away with it. Um, okay. I do hold it over his head the few times i've beat him straight up even without uh, getting help and right. i ripped into him for a few times and that then i try to avoid playing with him <laughs> yeah <laughs> smart. yeah yeah do it uh, run and hide <laughs> um any asks of the audience or people listening if there's one thing you wish everyone would do or take away from today what do you think it would be one thing Honestly, just go ahead and, and, and get assessed. Stop stop guessing what your problem is. Stop listening to people that are saying, oh, you're lifting your head up and that's why you're missing a certain way. Like, 
keep your eye on the ball. Of course, we're going to keep our eye on the ball, but you might not literally physically be able to keep your eye on the ball when you're trying to rotate 100 miles an hour, right? Right? Like, like, so literally just go ahead and get assessed and just be honest with yourself. Um, stop getting yourself into quicksand, to yeah. be honest, because you're just going to end up really bugging yourself up and you're going to go through the, <laughs> I, well, a buddy told me to do this and a buddy told me to do that whole thing. Get assessed by a professional and make a commitment to yourself if it's out of your price range, then what I would say is try to find somebody within your price range or honestly try to reevaluate if that's something you want to take seriously or if you want to just continue to do it recreationally. But stop taking this game and see, letting it ruin your life. I've seen a lot of people that start hating the golf, myself included at sometimes, where you just take it too seriously. Just go out, yeah. have fun, and just be thankful that you're going to spend four hours with your buddies or four hours just to go ahead and get outside. Like not that many hobbies for a lot of our listeners are four hours at a time where you get to hang out and do something that you're supposed to just enjoy. It's just a game, you know, just stop taking life too seriously. Fantastic answer. Andrew Mercer, thanks a lot for coming on. Where can people find more about you find out more about you social channels what's the best way to get a hold of you so the what best way to get a hold of me would honestly get a hold of me um by instagram so that's just dr andrew mercer um on instagram or finding me just emailing me asking whatever question that you want at dr.andrewmercer at outlook.com i do have a couple locations that i work at and actually actively treat people um so i would say you can literally go to g park canada at Kingsville Golf and Country Club, okay? And starting November 1st, I'll have my new clinic in Windsor, Ontario called Apex Performance and Wellness. So you can reach out to me there if you want, if you're in that area. From there, honestly, just, if you know Ryan, get, you get my number too, <laughs> if you have his number. Yeah, I'll be the gatekeeper of your phone number. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we'll have to do this again when you get your new place opened up. I'd love to continue the conversation. There's a bunch of things that we didn't cover, mm-hmm. uh, but I'd love to do it inside Apex and get a look at your new space. Yeah, 100%. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, buddy. Okay, buddy.